God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. All that I am, all that I possess, you have given me. I surrender it all back unto your will, my King, all fair and holy, my King, Jesus, most holy, my King, Jesus, most holy. I love you, Lord, you are my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. You, you are, are my strength. strength. The Lord has saved me. He wanted me for his own. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The mountains were shaken to their base. They reeled at his terrible anger. Smoke came forth from his nostrils, and scorching fire from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by its heat. He lowered the heavens and came down, a black cloud under his feet. He came enthroned on the cherubim. He flew on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, the dark waters of the clouds his tent. A brightness shone out before him with hailstones and flashes of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens. The Most High let his voice be heard. He shot his arrows, scattered the foe, flashed his lightnings and put them to flight. The bed of the ocean was revealed. The foundations of the world were laid bare. At the thunder of your threat, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your anger. From on high he reached down and seized me. He drew me forth from the mighty waters. He snatched me from my powerful foe, from my enemies whose strength I could not match. They assailed me in the day of my misfortune,
but the Lord was my support. He brought me forth into freedom. He saved me because he loved me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has saved me. He, he wanted, wanted me for his own. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance, and scatter my darkness. He rewarded me because I was just, repaid me, for my hands were clean. For I have kept the way of the Lord, and have not fallen away from my God. For his judgments are all before me. I have never neglected his commands. I have always been upright before him. I have kept myself from guilt. He repaid me because I was just, and my hands were clean in his eyes. You are loving with those who love you. You show yourself perfect with the perfect. With the sincere you show yourself sincere, but the cunning you outdo in cunning. For you save a humble people, but humble the eyes that are proud. You, O Lord, are my lamp, my God who lightens my darkness. With you I can break through any barrier. With my God I can scale any wall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance, and scatter my darkness. O oh, wondered at the words of grace, which came from the mouth of the Lord, from the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. I, Paul, exhort you by the meekness and kindness of Christ. I who, you say, when present in your midst am lowly, but when absent am bold toward you. I beg you that when I am there, I may not have to act boldly. With that assurance, I might dare to use courageously against certain ones who accuse us of weak human behavior. We do indeed live in the body, but we do not wage war with human resources. The weapons of our warfare are not merely human. They possess God's power for the destruction of strongholds. We demolish sophistries and every proud pretension that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We likewise bring every thought into captivity to make it obedient to Christ. We are ready to punish disobedience in anyone else once your own obedience is perfect. You view things superficially. If anyone is convinced that he belongs to Christ, let him reflect on this. He may belong to Christ, but just as much do we. If I find I must make a few further claims about the power the Lord has given us for your upbuilding and not for your destruction, this will not embarrass me in the least. At the same time, I do not wish to intimidate you with my letters. His letters, they say, are severe and forceful, but when he is here in person, he is unimpressive, and his word makes no great impact. Well, let such people give this some thought, that what we are by word in the letters during our absence, that we mean to be in action when we are present. We are not so bold, of course, as to classify or compare ourselves with certain people who recommend themselves. Since people like that are their own appraisers, comparing themselves with one another, they only demonstrate their ignorance. When we make claims, we will not go over the mark, but will stay within the bounds the God of moderation has set for us, leading us to you. We are not overreaching ourselves, as we should be doing if we had not bothered to come to you. But indeed, we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast immoderately of the work of others. We hope that, as your faith grows, our influence may also grow among you and overflow. Following the rule laid down for us, 
we hope to preach the gospel even beyond your borders without having to boast of work already done by another in his allotted territory. Let him who would boast, boast in the Lord. It is not the man who recommends himself who is approved, but the man whom the Lord recommends. You must endure a little of my folly. Put up with me, I beg you. I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God himself, since I have given you in marriage to one husband, presenting you as a chaste virgin to Christ. My fear is that, just as the serpent seduced Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted and you may fall away from your sincere and complete devotion to Christ. I say this because when someone comes preaching another Jesus than the one we preached, or when you receive a different spirit than the one you have received, or a gospel other than the gospel you accepted, you seem to endure it quite well. I consider myself inferior to the super-apostles in nothing. I may be unskilled in speech, but I know that I am not lacking in knowledge. We have made this evident to you in every conceivable way. Though we live in this world, we do not rely solely on the resources of the world to do battle. Our warfare is not waged with the weapons of this world. We arm ourselves with the shield of faith and with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Our warfare is not waged with the weapons of this world. From the life of St. Ignatius, from his own words, by Luis Gonzalez. Ignatius was passionately fond of reading worldly books of fiction and tales of knight errantry. When he felt he was getting better, he asked for some of these books to pass the time. But no book of that sort could be found in the house. Instead, they gave him a life of Christ and a collection of the lives of saints written in Spanish. By constantly reading these books, he began to be attracted to what he found narrated there. Sometimes in the midst of his reading, he would reflect on what he had read. Yet at other times, he would dwell on many of the things which he had been accustomed to dwell on previously. But at this point, our Lord came to his assistance, ensuring that these thoughts were followed by others which arose from his current reading. While reading the life of Christ our Lord or the lives of the saints, he would reflect and reason with himself. What if I should do what St. Francis or St. Dominic did? In this way, he let his mind dwell on many thoughts. They lasted a while until other things took their place. Then those vain and worldly images would come into his mind and remain a long time. This sequence of thoughts persisted with him for a long time. But there was a difference. When Ignatius reflected on worldly thoughts, he felt intense pleasure. But when he gave them up out of weariness, he felt dry and depressed. Yet when he thought of living the rigorous sort of life he knew the saints had lived, he not only experienced pleasure when he actually thought about it, but even after he dismissed these thoughts, he still experienced great joy. Yet he did not pay attention to this, nor did he appreciate it until one day in a moment of insight, he began to marvel at the difference. Then he understood his experience. Thoughts of one kind left him sad, the others full of joy. And this was the first time he applied a process of reasoning to his religious experience. Later on, when he began to formulate his spiritual exercises, he used this experience as an illustration to explain the doctrine he taught his disciples on the discernment of spirits. Whoever speaks should proclaim God's message. Whoever ministers should serve by the power that God gives. So that in all of you, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Before all else, be constant in your love for one another. So that in all of you, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, you gave St. Ignatius of Loyola to your church to bring greater glory to your name. May we follow his example on earth 
and share the crown of life in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.